Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm going to talk for five minutes about a two-year process, so I will do my best to give you a quick overview. So I'm going to be discussing um, our Guam's development of a uh, stakeholder-driven coral reef restoration action plan. I don't have time to give you any background on Guam, but let me just tell you we need restoration. That's all you're going to get. Uh, so restoration planning is incredibly important if you're going to be doing any kind of coral reef restoration. So it allows you to maximize the success of your coral reef restoration efforts, um, increase your return on investment. You're involving stakeholders, if it's done properly, in a transparent process, and you're making decisions using the best available scientific and social science data. Um, it also big bonus, uh, is a rationale for grant makers. So when you're applying for grants and you can say, look, in our restoration action plan, we said that this was important. Can we have some money for it? And that tends to work quite well. So that is good for increasing funding. Uh, so the process that we used and that we went through is based on the manager's guide to coral reef restoration planning and design. And I know that everyone heard about that in the plenaries yesterday. It is a six step iterative adaptive management process um, and I'm going to only kind of be touching on uh, goal uh, step one and step two a little bit because that's all I have time for um, but I highly encourage you um, for anyone who's interested in restoration planning this is an awesome resource it's super helpful you've got workbooks and it's really uh, step by step and helpful so we started our restoration planning process in uh, right at the beginning of the pandemic, which was actually incredibly helpful because we had time. Um, so during the very first step, uh, we set goals for restoration, and we have three goals for coral reef restoration on Guam. So the first goal is that the structure and function of coral communities are going to be restored to enhance resilience to thermal stress. We've had pretty severe bleaching uh, since 2013, um, and this is a very important goal for our managers and stakeholders. Our second goal is that reef fish habitat will be restored to support sustainable commercial and non-commercial fisheries. And our third goal is that ecologically important and rare species that have declined significantly will be recovered to sustain their specific functions and maintain biodiversity. So between um, early 2020 and mid 2021, we developed the action plan for goal one. Uh, so we had a six person team of local experts and um, we had the action plan for goal one. So we still have two more to do, but we have a wonderful uh, coral fellow, Camille Kitacho, who is here this week, and she is leading the charge to uh, do the action plans for goal two and three, and then we're gonna put them all together, package it, and have our completed action plan, hopefully by middle of next year. Um, so I really wanted to talk about uh, step two of this process, which I thought was the most interesting and the most um, the most complicated and time consuming, but like I love a color coded spreadsheet. <laughs> so this, and I'm talking about this primarily because we did this differently. That's in the guide. So if anyone wants to talk about it afterwards, if anyone's using this process and would like to chat, I'm happy to do that. So these in the manager's guide, it's a semi quantitative process. And this is also semi-quantitative, however, it's less semi-quantitative. Uh, so what we did here was we came up with a list of 14 indicators. We had all of our potential sites. We had a list of 14 indicators, some of which are biological, some of which are social and economic. And we, within our team of six people, we went through and for each site, we gave a semi-quantitative rating for each indicator. So anywhere from a one to a three. So a one is bad and a three is good and it scales differently depending on what the indicator is. Um, but I loved doing this and I thought it kind of gave our site selection a little bit of extra oomph. And after this, um, another thing that we did that I think is super important is we um, had a pretty extensive stakeholder uh, webinar and we got everyone else's feedback on this webinar um, on our sites that we had selected. And one of the pieces of feedback that we had gotten was that we really needed 
um, not just a bunch of scientists sitting in a room talking about cultural values. So we consulted a bunch of other people and got more feedback. So if anyone wants to talk about this <laughs> um, at another time, I am happy to chat with you. <laughs> do I do questions now or is that later? Um, let's hold questions. Okay. Uh, I got you. Okay. <laughs> Hey. Yeah. <laughs>